Welcome. Good morning. I'm really glad you're all here, whether it's your first time or whether you've been here for years and years and years, it's still nice that you're here. Let's come on in and find a place. And I'm going to open this up in prayer, and then we are going to worship God, because he is worthy of our worship. Father God, we just thank you that we have the freedom to gather and to praise you, Lord. We are so grateful for the price you paid for us, and we just want to worship your name and just tell you how much we love you and how excited we are to be in your presence together as a group in your name. Amen.
says you wait for the crown Tell the world of the treasure you found Thank you, Lord. Your worthy praise this morning. We thank you, Lord, that your name alone changes circumstances, changes the things inside of our hearts, inside of our mind, changes the things that seem impossible. Thank you, Lord. Great to love. 
name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Yes.
So this morning, I, I don't know uh, what's going on in your life, but I just felt like uh, I wanted to share this with you this morning, that the Lord wants us to come to these situations with praise and thanksgiving. He wants us to come to the line of the battle and believe that He is enough. So this morning, I just want us to sing this song together. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. At the situation, at the circumstance, at the enemy. Because the Lord shows us that He is faithful. He shows us that His promises are true. So I encourage you to join in this morning. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song when who sits on heaven's birth.
just swell with praise for him. Wow. (laughs) We just need a moment of God's. God's here with us. If you've got a need, reach out because God is here and God touches needs. We don't just go through a plan, but we serve a living, real God and he's here to meet you. Um, Let's let all of the little people Stand up and head downstairs with Miss Ashley and Carolyn and Debbie, and we appreciate them. We'll let you guys sit down. If the people that are helping with the offering will come up, please. We'll let them get into place and let the little people down. Let's bow our heads in one more prayer. God, we just thank you that you allow us to minister to you in our giving. We say thank you that you've been so generous with us. And we just praise you and we just honor you and this is a time when we can just thank you by giving back and we just are excited to do it in your name amen have a couple announcements for you we have a community service coming the first weekend the 6th of august first weekend in august instead of 10 o'clock you got to set your alarm different it's going to start at nine o'clock in the morning it'll be over at the park and there will be a whole group of churches so we can worship together as the family the extended family of god We also have a youth camp coming, and if you're not signed up, what are you waiting for? Youth camp is August 21st through the 24th. It costs $225, and if that's a problem, see um, Pastor Josh, wherever he went. And there are some scholarship funds available, so don't wait. Get in line. Also, since Janet lebrecht has been gone, I've had some women come to me and say, hey, I miss those times we spent together. So we are resurrecting the Ladies' Craft Day. It's held in the overflow, and the first one will be Saturday the 19th of August, so mark your calendars. You don't have to be crafty. You can come and visit. You can come and work on whatever you want to. Um, I will be there from... 10 o'clock until 3 and we usually break for lunch and go out to lunch together and we do like fast food so if that's a problem we kind of try to keep it budget friendly and invite people if you've got a neighbor or a friend we've it's not just ladies in the church that are invited so you can bring other people along and if you can't stay for all of it you can pop in when you can and stay as long as you want so those are what are happening at Momentum Church And let's stand up and greet each other. And I'd like you to share something you are thankful for this morning with some people around you.
All right. Uh, let's find your seats, please. Hustle bustle. All right, here we go. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you that it's alive and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. I don't know what it is about your word, but it's powerful. It changes me so often. And this morning, God, I just ask that you would speak to each and every one of us. God, no matter where we're at, no matter what we're facing, that you would intervene. Jesus, I desperately need you. I can't live without you. Please have your way. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, amen. Amen. Back in the day, Debbie and I would buy random things uh, on TV. So this is really before, I guess this will show my age, before the internet. You know, before you could go and get online and buy different things, they would have these commercials. And these commercials were great because they would have all kinds of items that people would sell. And they would do all kinds of stuff. They would dice and slice. And then they would also, uh, you know, keep your soda cold. Amazing stuff, right? Always online. And there was, or excuse me, on TV. And there was this one thing. It was red red and it was black and and it was the solution to all our problems the name of this thing was a turbo cooker have you heard of a turbo cooker oh it's like a mic it's better than a microwave because they're home cooked meals uh, so what you would do is you would put your stuff in this turbo cooker and then you close the lid on it and you push a button and you would set it and forget it oh man Debbie and I were so excited Uh, so I I learned how to cook at a really young age because I had to and Debbie uh, wasn't as experienced as cooking but my cooking was different than her cooking it still is So you start everything on high. Because who needs to waste any time? This is my cooking. Are you following me? So I'm not going to waste time. I want to get it done fast, right? So this set it and forget it thing was amazing. So we, we, you know, of course, it was just like four easy payments of $19.95 plus shipping and handling. And so we called in and we ordered it. And it was just the five easy payments of 1995 plus shipping and handling, which was interesting because 1995 was the shipping and handling for it as well. So six easy payments of shipping and handling of 1995. So we're so excited. It comes into uh, the mail, and we get it in our little apartment, and I, we're, just, we're just excited. This is going to make Debbie's cooking so much better, and it's going to make my cooking so much faster, right? And so we get it, and we open it up, and there it is, this beautiful red and black piece of art that we're getting ready to use and so in it, it didn't just come with the, the, the pan, the, the ensemble or ensemble, so to speak, of this thing. But it came with other things in it. It came with little recipes. And we knew that these recipes were going to be the best. So in excitement, uh, we set aside our mission macaroni and cheese and pull out this recipe and we get the things for it. This is a big deal for us because macaroni, cheese, and hot dogs were the highlight of our meals at this time in our life, right? And so, uh, by the way, fried hot dogs and mac and cheese with ketchup on top? Yes, Jesus. Okay, 
Uh, so it was amazing. So we get this thing and we put everything in the thing and we pop it on and we, we turn the stove on to the temperature and, and then we push the button, we set it and we forget it. And so we go on and we do our thing and uh, what we didn't realize is that the metal on this pan was paper thin. And so when we got to enjoy this fine meal that we we're going to have, it was burnt. It was, in fact, we noticed that the whole thing was just complete garbage. <laughs> the whole idea of setting it and forgetting it was a bad idea. It burnt everything. And it wasn't even me just cooking everything on high. We even tried the lower temperatures. But it was a piece of garbage. And if, you're, if you have like stock in turbo cooker, I'm sorry. Uh, but we, it just didn't work out for us. And so uh, we ended up, uh, after a while, we ended up giving it to Goodwill so that we could bless another family with set it and forget it. But it was amazing that all these promises were tied to this one piece of device. Device, is that what it would be called? It's a pan with a lid that locked in a little button timer, right? Okay, device. And so uh, we had all our, set all our promises on this and then we had this expectation that when we cooked with this and we opened it up, Martha Stewart would be coming out and it would be this beautiful, pre beautiful meal. And it wasn't. It didn't meet our expectations. And nothing worked with this thing. So it was a goner. Have you ever experienced something like that? Where you're going through life and, and you, you got all these promises or even these expectations with different things and they're different than the way that you expected them? Have you ever faced that? I sure have. I, if you could turn your Bible to Matthew chapter, uh, let's see, 11. We're going to go through uh, 2 through 6. Chapter 11, 2 through 6. Now, just to give you a refresher, there's this guy named John the Baptizer, and he's the forerunner of Jesus, which means that he's the guy telling Jesus is coming, get ready for, get ready for him. He's going to do some great stuff in your life. He, he's our Messiah, our long-awaited Messiah. And John the Baptist uh, said some stuff to the wrong people, and the wrong people got offended, and so offended they put him in jail and a long story short they ended up actually beheading him uh, and so here is John the Baptist and he's he's hearing about all the stuff that Jesus is doing and, and he's hearing all kinds of stuff and so verse 2 it says this when John heard in prison what Christ was doing he sent his disciples to ask him are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone different? Wait a minute. This is the guy that was supposed to go out and tell everybody about Jesus that he's coming to get your hearts ready because he's going to change everything. And here John the baptizer, he's in prison and he's going, oh, wait. Some of the expectations that I have for him are different than what he's doing. They're not, they're not lining up. And we don't know what those expectations that Jesus wasn't meeting at the time. We just know that he sent his disciples to make sure that he's the guy. That, he's, that Jesus is the God man. Just to check it out, right? And so Jesus responds in a way that uh, Jesus always responds. Uh, he, he doesn't, he just gets right to the point and verse four, Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and what you see. The blind receive sight the lame they walk those who have leprosy 
are cured. The deaf they hear, the dead they're raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. This is his response. John, John's like, hey, you're not meeting my expectations. And then Jesus lines up all these things that, that, that dis, John's disciples have seen. I, I, I don't know how he did it, but he prayed for someone who was blind and they could see clearly. I don't know how he did it, but, but he, he prayed for those, this guy that he couldn't hear and, and he was healed. I, I, I don't know how he did it, She was dead and brought back to life. And and then, and not only that, but but he's not like going to like the big authorities, the the super wealthy, the well to do's, the those that know, but but he's he's sharing good news that, that that all the folks that are poor. All the folks that are sinful and broken and not religious, they're, they're, he's sharing with them. And amazing things are happening. All this is happening. We don't know necessarily what John's re- response is, but we, we do know that his expectations were, were, were perhaps different in the beginning to what Jesus was doing. Now there's another guy in the book of Genesis named Abraham and he had, he, he was just an everyday, in my, my estimation, uh, an everyday or ordinary guy and, and, and I would even suggest that maybe he was really broken ordinary everyday guy. <laughs> And so, so here we got Abraham, and, and before he became Abraham, he was a guy called Abram, and this is the occasion. And Abram, he experiences God in a powerful way. Genesis chapter 12. And he experiences God in a powerful way. So let me just read it for you. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your country your people and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. Ordinary, everyday, pretty broken guy. And and God speaks to him. He says, hey, I want you to leave everything. I want you to to go from everything you know. I want you to change your context completely. I I want you to have a paradigm shift. I want want something different for you. I want your perspective to change. I want your location to change. I want everything different for you. And I'm going to tell you where to go. I want you to pack everything up, leave everything you know, and go. And then there's a promise to that. So, 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 so Abram, this broken, ordinary guy, he's standing there, he's experiencing God. God says, hey, pack up everything, go. Hey, you don't even know where you're going to go. It's okay, buddy. I got you. I'll show you, Right? And he, so he does it. He packs up everything to go. And then he gives, God gives him a promise. He says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. Isn't that interesting? God tells him to go. But then says that when you do go, you're going you're gonna to be a great nation. And this, this going, this going ape, this going ape, it's not for you. It's for others. Because there's a second part to it. You will be a blessing. 
It means that there's this expectation, there's this mentality that Abe was going to bless others. Abe was going to make his name great, but his name will be great because he'll be a blessing. Then verse 3, I will bless those who bless you. So Abe's to go, and then wherever he goes, God says, I'll bless you. You're, you're for other people. I'll be, in fact, you're so much for other people that, that when you connect with other people in this totally different neighborhood that you're going to, and they, they look at you and go, man, that Abe, I'm going to bless him. They'll be blessed because of it. Well, there's another tie to it. And everyone that curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. All the people on earth will be blessed through you. So you see this picture of this, this outward focus mentality that, that, that God is saying just right from the get-go, Abe, I know you're broken. I know you got all this stuff. I know you're ordinary, but I'm going to send you. I'm going to change your context, the situation that you're in. I'm going to change your perspective, how you think about stuff and how you do stuff. I'm going to show you. I'm going to lead you. Your job is to follow me. And when you follow me, you know what will happen? Other people will be blessed. Yeah, in the process, I'm going to make you a great nation. Yeah, in the process, I'm going to make your name great. But my priority... Is that Abe, you'll be a blessing. Not just now. Not, not just to some people. But, but to all, all, all people. Wait a minute. That's a big world. To all people. So, Abraham left. Abram left. And the Lord had told him, and Lot, which was his relative, went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. Okay, so, so I'm going to send you. I'm going I'm to bless you. I'm going to make you many nations. I'm going to do all these great things in you and through you. And, and, and people are just going to be blessed. Now, if you could flip your Bibles to chapter 15. It's amazing that God gives him a promise. And in the midst of this promise, there's this time that he's waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. We, we just made a trip to uh, western Washington to a place called, well, Westport and Copalis Crossing and uh, uh, a Seabrook. And so we went to all these different locations, right? And so we went from here to Westport. That was our first stop and we spent two days in Westport. And so it was this great journey. But uh, so we have a small SUV. Yes, it does have third row seating. Uh, But my kids, uh, I would say, are a little bit taller than some, right? So, So Noah, all six of us rode in this car. It's not like riding in the suburban. I don't know what we're thinking. Uh, so all six of us rode in the car. Noah was in the back. My son Noah is six foot one. Uh, and then next to him was Rayma, who I don't know how, t- how tall she is. My, my little princess, eight years old. And then in front of Noah was Lily. She's 17. And then next to Lily was Emmett, and then in front of Emmett was me. I, I got to drive most of the time. 
and then I got tired uh, and dis- well not tired but distracted uh, and then Debbie drove as well she was in the passenger seat and we took this drive do you know that it's about an eight hour drive we covered that distance in about ten hours <laughs> pretty big deal right and the same that all throughout this trip. So on the way back, we stopped in Yakka Vegas. Uh, some people know it as Yakima, but most people know it as Yakka Vegas. Uh, the Vegas of, oh, Palm Springs of Washington, sorry. Uh, so we stopped in Yakima, which turned it into a four and a half hour trip, right? But there was this kid that was right behind me that would make this question over and over again. We just get into the car. We, we haven't even, we haven't even, we're left, we left home, uh, but we haven't even gotten past Addie. And the question is, are we? You've ever heard that before? And so this was a consistent theme throughout the trip, was are we? There yet. Man, waiting is a pain. So Abraham, he, he gets this promise from God that God's going to do all these things and he's waiting and he's waiting and he's waiting and he's waiting and more than 10 years pass by. That's where we pick up in chapter 15. More than 10 years pass, pass by. And we know this also that, that it's just this long time because it says 15, after this. We should just say that that was still waiting. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Now, Abram just won a battle uh, with, uh, against five other kings. And then one of those kings said, hey, I'm going to reward you. I'm going to bless you. And, and Abram's like, no, 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 no. I don't want it. And then we go to after this. Do not be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield and your great reward. So we see Abram and, he, and he's still waiting, right? And then, and then God gives him victory and he says, no, 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 no. I'm not going to receive the spoils from somebody else. Which is kind of offensive in this culture, right? Because he's basically saying, no, 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 we're not going to be allies, I, 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 I'm not going to align myself with you. And he steps back. And all of a sudden, his 300 and some odd men in him are alone. And everybody's looking at him. And nobody's happy with him. And then God speaks into the midst of the situation. And he says... Don't be afraid. I know that that all these folks are upset with you. They outnumber you. They can overcome you easily. Don't be afraid. And he says, for I am your shield. So this powerful moment, it says, God is saying, I'm going to speak right into where you're at. I know you may not look afraid because you're a conqueror. I know you just had this great battle. I, I know that there might be a tendency to be sad after a great battle and to be fearful. But I want you to know, I, I want you to hear me. Don't be afraid. Then, then he, he doesn't just leave it there. He's not just like this God who's this big man upstairs that keeps a distance. But he says that I am your shield. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. God is speaking into Abram's situation and saying, I'm so close to you. That it's like a shield that you would wear. But I'm so close to you that it's like the shield that you wear. But I'm going to protect you. Your circumstances, your situation may change. But I am your protector. And then then on top of that, 
He says, your very great reward. So Abram, I know you, you just went through this battle. I know you just turned down all this money and all this blessing. For my blessing. And I want you to know, Abram, that I'm your shield, but I'm also not only your protector, but I'm your provider. Because remember that promise I gave to you earlier? That I would bless you to bless others. That I would make your name great to bless others. That all that I designed you for was to demonstrate who I am. Not to just your neighborhood. Not, not to just those that are, are, are fighting against you or fighting for you or fighting with you. But I want you to know that you were designed to be a blessing not just to one, but to all. Now, when you're waiting, you have all these questions and these expectations and these promises that you're, you're looking at them. I don't know about you, but maybe that was me, you know. I, I remember putting that turbo cooker on the stove and I had all these expectations and I was waiting and there was promises tied to this. Martha Stewart's going to come out of this meal. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be beautiful, perfectly cooked. It's going to taste so good. It's going to solve all our problems. In fact, we're going to have all our meals in less than 30 minutes, right? Set it and forget it. We don't even have to worry about it. It's going to be so good. And so all these promises. And then, then we tried the one meal. And our expectations were shot. Maybe we did something wrong. Maybe we, 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 we got to... Yeah, maybe we got to adjust our, our expectations. Lower them for this thing. Maybe it'll make a kind of good meal. Cook again. No kind of good meal. Just wasn't going to hit it. The longer that we had it, the longer that we waited with it, we just ended up putting it in the cupboard and then eventually giving it to Goodwill, right? So here Abraham... Abram at the time, more than 10 years waiting for all these promises that God had made him. All these uh, statements that God had said. And now look at, look at his response after God tells him that he's going to provide and protect him. But Abraham said, oh, sovereign Lord, what can you give me? Since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my state is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abraham said, you've given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. It's an interesting statement, isn't it? I've been waiting all this time. Still don't have a son. Still haven't gotten pregnant. All these promises that you made, they still feel like they're empty. And then, and then in fact, what's interesting, that Eleazar of Damascus, he's not even a relative. Lot was his relative. So if, if Abram died, Lot would get his whole estate. But what's interesting is a lot of commentaries say this Eleazar, Damascus, is the bank. Like, ah, ah, you're giving me all this and it's just going to go to the bank. It's an interesting statement. And, and here's this promise that you made me that you're going to make me a great nation, but I can't even have a son. This promise isn't even showing up. Unmet expectations and unmet promises. I, I don't know about you, but you know, I, when we got this turbo cooker, we thought, well, it'll do something. And then, then we just started lowering the expectations of this turbo cooker. It 
And we do the same thing. I wonder, I wonder if, if Abram, you know, just to see the, all that God had done, how he moved and, and God was faithful in the moving, changing his context and his perspective. I wonder if he said, okay, God, you're probably not going to do this. I know you'll be my shield and my, my, my provider. But what good is all this other stuff if the promise isn't happening. My many years of ministry, I've seen all kinds of things happen. But that statement, it's not used, unique to Abraham. So, ah, God, I'm doing all this stuff. But it just doesn't seem to be lining up. So I'm just going to lowball it. I'm going to reduce my expectations for what you're doing. Well, God, you just you changed everything for me. And now, now how, how am I going to manage? How am I going to navigate this? I don't know if you're going to meet it anymore. Have you ever been there? Have you ever faced that? We, we went to Copalis Crossing to preach for my old youth pastor, Ryan and Jess. Ryan and Jess, they, they served with me in Sultan and uh, they came in, uh, this vibrant young couple. Uh, just loved Jesus, just loved people. And they were my youth pastors. I was so excited to have them. And they had this thing that they had been praying for five years to have a baby. They had people prophesy over them. They had people pray over them, laying on hands, all kinds of stuff. All because they just wanted a baby. And it was hard to navigate this stuff. And one day, Pastor Ryan just says, you know, I just, I just want to be a dad. I prayed about it and thought about it and I just, I just thought, wow, these guys are such great people. They make amazing parents. And I prayed and, and I felt like God gave me a, a word, a scripture. In the New Testament, there's this verse in Hebrews that says, against all hope, against all hope, that means like looking at the situation and it's never going to happen. Never going to move forward. Against all hope, next part of that, Abraham believed. Another way to say that, against all hope, Abraham had faith. Against all hope, Abraham trusted. Against all hope, Abraham just knew that God could. Against all hope that, that Abraham knew that God promised. And so he would. Because he always keeps his promises. Against all hope, Abraham knew that God would be faithful. Against all hope, God, God is always faithful. And so we got this, this young couple and they're looking at it and they're praying over it. And, and uh, just wrote that on his whiteboard and just walked out. I didn't even tell him that I wrote it on there. And they just... Continue to pray, and they continue to pray. And then, in a moment of like incredible faith, they stepped out, and and they uh, went and bought a baby's outfit. <laughs> it's just a silly thing, right? It's just this is our this is our statement of faith. This is our we're we're not just going to talk about it. We're just not going to just pray about it. We're going to take a step into it. We're, we're just going to believe God for it and let him do whatever he's going to do. We just, we just know that this is what we want. And we're going to ask him. And if he wants something different, we're going to, and that's better because it's always better when God wants something different. So we're just going to believe for whatever he has for us. But we sure would like this. So they prayed about it. And they went and bought this outfit. A little bit later, do you know what happened? 
They had a baby. Do you know what happened when we went to Copela's Crossing? They had their third baby. Clover. I even got to hold her. So awesome. And so in this process, what was amazing is that that for them it was just, it was a step of faith. It was a decision that they made. And they were okay with whatever decision God would make with that. But they were going to ask. They were going to believe big. And they were going to be bold about it. There's other couple, Rick and Vanessa, they heard that, that Pastor Ryan and Jess were, were having a baby and, and, and their hearts were torn because they were besties. They didn't know how to talk about it. They didn't know how to navigate it because they know that Rick and Vanessa had been trying forever and, and nothing was happening. And Rick and Vanessa ha- had started uh, giving all their baby stuff that they had already saved for their baby to Ryan and Jess. Rick and Vanessa, three days later. Isn't that interesting? That, or, excuse me, three babies later, not days later. Three babies later. Vanessa had her first and she says, I'm not going to have any more. This is awful pregnancy. <laughs> like, well, I don't know. Then they had twins. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Okay, so focus. Uh, <laughs> So, so this picture, it was interesting because, see, what, one thing that we don't see and one thing we didn't see and maybe we don't see about Abraham, but his faith made a difference to everyone around him. Do you remember what he was designed for? The promise that God gave him to be what? Here he is. And the waiting, it's just not happening. It's not, it's not connecting. What does he do? So then God does what he always does. Changes his context. Changes his perspective. And he changes everything for Abe. See, Abe, when he was saying, God, you haven't given me a son. What what good is all this when I just can't even see a promise fulfilled? What good is all this when my expectations keep seeming to get lower and lower and lower? And in this moment, God takes him from the tent to the stars. He says, hey, Abe, I can't share this with you in there. I shared this over and over again, but you're you're, you're in the wrong context. You're you're in the wrong perspective. But you just gotta, you just gotta make this decision, Abe. Come outside. Step out of the tent. Just, just take this moment to cross this threshold. And I wonder if that it could be applicable to us and where we're at. If you're, if you're facing these unmet expectations or unmet promises and you're, 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 you're settling and you're about ready to give up and throw in the towel, which by the way happened to believers over and over and over again all throughout Scripture, in the book of James, it says, keep on, keep on, persevere, don't give up. And Peter, it talks about contending for the faith, to not, to not just let it go, to press in, to press on. Over and over again, we see this picture of perseverance. That's a mark of every single person that follows Jesus. And here Abraham is, is, is in this position that he wants to give up. It's overwhelming. Come on, God, when are you, why, why, when, how, what? God. God says in verse 5, he took him outside. Just 
Step out of the tent. What is it that's in your life that, that, that you have put in it to keep you from believing God for great things? What is it that you put in your life that, that keeps you from being bold about believing God for big things? Do you imagine what Abraham's life would have been like if he decided to continue to stay in the tent? If he continued to say, God, you didn't do anything? Why aren't you moving? I can't see anything that you're doing. Could you imagine what that would be like? I can. I could tell you what that would be like. He wouldn't have been a blessing to those around him. He wouldn't have blessed the nations around him. And really, in Galatians, I'll get there too in a moment, but in Galatians it talks about that you and I, those of us that trust Jesus, we're seeds of Abraham. When was it that you made a decision to stop believing the promises of God for your life? When was it that you were not willing to step across that threshold to let your context change? To let your perspective change? When was it that you you stopped looking at those around you and thinking, well, I'm to be a blessing to them because God is a blessing to me? He started going, well, God, what, 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 what about me? Don't, don't my opinions matter? Well, yeah. But what's greater than our opinions is for us to be, like Abraham, a blessing. He took him outside. He said, look at the heavens. Count the stars. If indeed you can count them. And he said to him, so shall your offspring be. What's interesting about this promise is it wasn't the first time that he mentioned it. He mentioned it over and over and over again. He says, take take a look. Come step out of the context you're in, this tent. I want you to see. Have you ever been outside with no lights around you? At my house, when when it's dark outside and we don't have any of the lights on, you can see all these stars. It's almost as if you could touch them. And you start to count them and they're more than you can count. I don't believe that God's people are ever meant to settle for small dreams limited by a tent. I don't believe that you're designed to operate in that way. I think that God has made promises and that God blesses you and God continues to commit to blessing you because He wants to be a blessing to those that are around him. I'm not going to get to that Galatians verse. You can look it up on your own, Galatians 3.29. But I'm going to finish here. In conclusion, I got how many days? Okay, in conclusion. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you, oh, excuse me, verse six. Abraham believed. You know that word believed, what that means? What it is in the Hebrew? It's amen. Do you know what amen means is so be it. 
So Abraham, he heard all that God had said and God changed his context and God changed his perspective and he says, son, you're looking too low. Look higher. Right? And he does all these things and then it says that Abraham amen to the Lord. He said, so be it. And he cried Oh, excuse me. And he credited it to him as righteousness. So what he's saying is, hey, you believe. You're, oh, you're saying so be it. So everything in your account, all the yucky stuff, all the awful stuff, everything in your account, it's covered. All the future stuff, it's covered. I got it. That's counted as righteousness. You're good to go, buddy. You're right with me. So let's keep moving, right? And then God reminds him again of who he is. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land and take possession of it. So here's the question that I have for you this morning. When it comes to God, have you lowered your expectations because you've been waiting for so long? Have you faced things in your life that you've given up hope on God? Have you concluded that this is just not working? That you can't take that next step, that you can't move forward? Have you gotten to a place where you say, I just lack faith. If that's you, and you want it to change, would you consider changing your context? Would you consider stepping out of that tent and look into the sky and dreaming big again for what God can do? Would you consider changing your perspective? Boy, I've been thinking this way all along. But maybe God has something bigger Maybe God has something better in mind. If it's a perspective change that you need, would I, could I encourage you to keep believing big for bold things? But could I also encourage you to maybe adjust your prayer? Asking for those big and bold things, but then also asking God, if you have something better and planned, and saying, I want that, would you help me recognize it? Would you help me notice what it is, for what it is? I trust you, so be it. Would you take a moment with me and stand? This morning, as you stand, uh, I'm going to be in the back and I'm going to, I'm going to give you a, a mustard seed. This is why. Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. My, my hope is that that mustard seed will remind you that your life is a seed and it's designed not for your own but for those around you and that seed it's dormant for a while but eventually it grows so the reminder is to not give up be willing to change your context and your perspective continue to believe God 
and faith. Would you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you know all things and that you see all things and that you made each and every one of us. So I just ask that you would change our hearts, that you speak to us, that if we need a context change, that you would change it. That if we need a perspective change, that you would change it. Help us to recognize what you're doing. And help us to have just a little faith. That our lives would be an amen, a so be it based on the great things that you've promised and what you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Uh-huh.
Christ alone. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What hearts of love! a group believing God for the things that we may have given up on and let's see what miracles he's going to do. Are you game for that? Yeah. Awesome. I'm just going to say be blessed when you pick up your little um, mustard seed. Let's take it to heart and let's believe God for wonderful things because I believe this is only just the beginning. Go and be blessed. We'll see you here next Sunday. Thanks.